segment, Saturdays at 9 a.m. on Ocala's News Talk, The Source 96.3 FM and 1370 a.m. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Twenty-five minutes before ten o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. I've been looking forward to this interview for a while. I, the, what I've read so far um, has intrigued me. Plus, our guest uh, was born the same year that my mom and dad were born. <laughs> uh, she has outlived them. Both of my parents have passed away. Your your uh, mom, your dad is, is gone. But, yes, but he, he, is. he was younger than I think my parents. Yes, Lavera. He was 55 when he died. Wow. Yes. Wow. La Vera Edick is on the phone. It says here she's 90. My mom would have turned 90 later this year, and so would yeah. my dad. My dad would have turned 90 next month, as a matter of fact. Yes. Uh, La Vera is an artist. She's also a genealogical researcher. She is a great, great grandmother, uh, an entrepreneur, the first lady of an insurance company. I'm not so sure what that means. Uh, and her book is called Four Score and More My Memoir, History, and family legacy uh lavira good morning it's, it's an honor to have you on our show uh, it's an honor to be on your show all right and where are and you Robin. where are you calling from oh, i am calling from bismarck north dakota north dakota wow oh it's got to be cold up there am i right it is it's uh we've had sort of a bad winter a lot of ice and snow but not as bad as some places in the east boston and new york for instance yeah, yeah. And, and and you were raised in Nebraska, am I right? Is that correct? Yes, I was raised on a dry land farm in Nebraska. And a dry land farm is where there's no irrigation, so we depended upon the weather to... Oh, really? ...had crops oh. or not. Right. I never heard of that. Is that, is that risky? Well, sure, it's risky because... Uh, well, I grew up in the dirty 30s, born in 1925, and then the stock market crash, the yeah. Great Depression, Dust Bowl days, and uh, we eventually lost our farm because the crops all dried up. So I want, I want to tell you just a little bit about us, because I think what I'm going to tell you can can go directly to what your point is today, uh, or at least part of the point. Uh, Robin and I make music, and in order, in order to make music, we have computers. And when computers crash, it is so frustrating. Sometimes I feel like saying, why don't we just get the instruments and play like they did in the old days? Forget yeah. the technology, uh -huh. <laughs> right? Sometimes, it, I mean, sometimes we love it, sometimes we hate it. Is, is that part of what we want to uh, talk about today? Yes, I, I believe it is. I, uh, you know, I often compare. I, I use Internet a lot, gain a lot from it. But yet when I look back, I see many little things in life that, that we are missing out on. Like what? For instance, uh, the younger generation don't seem to have the time to, to uh, do a lot of the things that we did. There's not family togetherness as there once was. There's not face-to-face -face conversations. It's uh, mostly uh, email, texting or email, yeah. or uh, you know, on smartphones. Yeah. And uh, I look back, and I think the long winter evenings, like I enjoyed with my family. On oh the farm man, I know. I, I, I didn't. Well, I had that a little bit. I'm Robin and I are sixty, so we're not that young. But, and we sort of remember what you're talking about, but it, but even b before our time, it looked like a much better time, except for things like the Depression and yeah. and, and things like the, the World Wars, which we could be looking at another one, who knows. But However, a lot of the people that grew up in my uh, time period that were born before 1940 look back on those bad times as the good times because there was so much family togetherness. There were, uh, our entertainment was uh, parent-teachers association programs once a month. And, <laughs> right, right, right. And, uh, yeah. Well, one, one thing I say about the music from that era, it seems to be more romantic. I, I, I don't know exactly why I feel that way, but, but, but that's even before my time, and it just seems more romantic to me. 
It was. I mean, I look back on some of the old country western songs that I loved, and even before that, my dad was a great singer, and uh, I grew up hearing some of those old songs. Oh, really? So when you were a kid, did your dad sit, with, like, in the evening, strumming the guitar and everybody sang along, or somebody play piano? Did you have that scene? No, we didn't have a piano. We didn't have a guitar. He just sang, and uh, I loved it. Hmm. My dad was a great influence on my life back in those years. Uh, in the evenings, we'd often play cards, and, of course, being a kid, I always liked to win, and... <laughs> and one time when I didn't, my dad threatened to punish me, and uh, I don't remember the punishment, but I remember his words. He said, LaVera May, you have to learn to be a good loser as well as a good winner, oh. because you're not going to win all of life's battles. Good advice, good advice. Uh, you talk about uh, married couples, about how now it's it, it seems to be easier these days just to walk out of a relationship instead of preserving it because once a person walks out they've always got people that sympathize with them and say yeah that's the best thing to do right yeah i i think that uh you know married couples don't take marriage as seriously as they once did oh yeah i don't think so either they have to do a part you know well, what, I don't know if you cover this in the book, but what do you think about religion in the United States? Do, do, where, I mean, in some ways, I, th I think we we're better, we're doing better than Europe. But what is your thought on that? Well, my thought is that uh, we are so busy that we don't take time for the little things, and it isn't a little thing. But one thing we don't take time for is is uh, trusting in God and talking to God, asking him for his guidance, which there again, I was taught by my dad. My dad grew up as a Quaker. And early in life, he told me, LaVera May, uh, God has a plan for each of us. He helps those who help themselves. And that has sort of been a guideline for me throughout life. Wow, I can't wait to read your book. So, so you decided to write a book about your life. Was this a first book for you? Well, I had written a book of poetry, but didn't have it published except, you know, just for family. Uh, can I ask a sense? Uh, uh, Lever, I have a sensitive and, and hopefully not too sensitive question. I I'm guessing you have outlived people who are younger than you in your family. Am I right? Uh, not in my family. Oh, really? really? We oh. Seem to, we seem to have, uh, well, my, I, I outlive my mother and father, of course, but right. in the younger generation, um, my older brother lived to be 92. Oh, wow. And, you know, we have uh, some longevity in the family. Well, that's so that's good. That's a good gene. <laughs> so so uh, do you have family that live near you in North Dakota? I have two sons that live here, a daughter that lives, uh, three daughters, one in Arizona, one in California, one in Pennsylvania. So when, when, and, we, read, uh, when we read your book, we get to know you, I'm guessing, and, and is most of the book um, from early in your life, or, or do you uh, cover the whole 90 years? I cover the whole 90 years. The last chapter is, is uh, uh, titled and now it's winter, so it's covering the last year of my life. But throughout the book, I not only talk about myself and my ancestors, uh, spend quite a bit of time talking about my ancestors. I have done genealogical research all over the United States as well as in Europe, and I found that all the tombstones seem to read something like uh, John Doe, born 1830, Dash, died 1910, and I often wondered what was in that dash, what made John Doe tick. Yeah, yeah. And so in doing my genealogical research, I tried to find stories and pictures of my ancestors as far back as, you know, they were taking pictures and make them come alive as uh, real people. The Greeks say, as long as we talk about our loved ones, they live. And when we stop talking about them, they die. No, oh, that's, oh, that's well. True. Well, in a way, that's yeah. true. You know, and and I've it often I've often thought about that. I mean, when when you have somebody 
who's not famous, the only people who ever talk about them are the people who would have known them during their lifetimes. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe somebody a generation or two later even. Maybe. But, but, like, right. people, but like people like George Washington, we talk about him all the time. I mean, mm -hmm. the guy must be kicking right. up. He, he doesn't rest ever. He, yeah, right. He gets no peace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I'm enjoying the conversation. We have to take a little break, though, and I need to mention this, that uh, this segment of AM Ocala Live is sponsored by Dr. Thomas Crowley. He's a board-certified ophthalmologist, and he is sponsoring segments of AM Ocala Live, which we appreciate greatly. Uh, he is at the Central Florida Eye Institute, which provides all kinds of medical and surgical eye care. They are located not too far from the mall, right across, in fact, from the parking lot on the Sears side. Um, the address is 3133 Southwest 32nd Avenue. Go visit Thomas, uh, Dr. Thomas Crowley. The uh, phone number over there is 237-8400. And we have Lavera Edick on the phone up in North Dakota. Her book is called Four Score and More. And that more is exactly 10 because she's 90 this year. I don't know. Has your birthday happened yet? No, it's in September. Okay. Oh, oh okay. And, and my mom's would have been, what, November? My November. Mom's, my mom yes. would have been November. So you're, you're practically twins with my mom, by the way. Uh, right. That's interesting. <laughs> so we'll take a little so break. How, I'm sorry? How long did your mother live? She died uh, 2012? Yeah. 2012. Right, so. right before her 87th birthday. 87, yeah. 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 Okay. Just so about 87. a long life. Right. Uh, uh, you know, and one of the things that I, I cherish forever are the last four years because four years before she died, my dad died. And uh, I love my dad, too, so I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea there. But but I would take her to church every Sunday after he died because I didn't want her to stop mm -hmm. that, that routine. And it was right. it was just a wonderful... I think it speaks to what you're talking about by spending time together rather than with the Internet and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, all right. We'll be right back with Lavera. This is the source, WOCA. The weather is brought to you by myfwc.com. Safe boating is no accident. A very warm day today with intervals of clouds and sun and a high of 83 to 87. Mostly cloudy tonight. There can be a shower, though, 60 to 64. Clouds and sunny breaks and much cooler tomorrow with a shower or two around. Highs ranging from the low 60s in the northernmost part of the zone to the mid 70s in the south. And Saturday, more clouds and sun and breezy with a shower possible highs in the upper 60s to lower 70s. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Joe Lundberg. Hi, this is Jimmy Bohannon from Bohannon Associates Land Surveying. And this is Sheila Arnett, Commissioner Earl Arnett's wife. And we are here representing Bohannon Associates team for the American Cancer Society Relay for Life. One out of every three people has been impacted by cancer. As you're hearing this, our good friend Bridget Harmon is battling cancer for the second time. And we are showing our support to her and everyone else that cancer has impacted by hosting a team for Relay for Life. We want to let you know about a very important fundraiser, March 11th, that Gator Dock sides off of 200 between 5 and 9 p.m. Gator Docksides will donate 10% of sales from the event directly to Relay for Life. And we'll have a silent auction full of wonderful gift baskets, so please make sure you come out and support us in fighting this terrible disease. March 11th at Gator Docksides from 5 to 9. If you'd like to donate items for the auction, please contact me at 352-875-8766. Or me at 352-209-1037. Please join us in supporting a great cause. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. Since selfies are often shot from below, the neck looks either fattier or saggier from that angle. So more people are seeking under the chin or double chin lipo, chin implants, and neck lifts to remove excess skin. Sleep on it. Trying to force a resolution when you're both exhausted can make things worse. So try tart cherry juice if you have any issues with joint pain or inflammation, and you just might sleep better, too. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Central Florida Eye Institute is the area's leader in laser vision correction. From high-definition refraction surgery and LASIK vision correction to custom cataract, glaucoma, and diabetic treatment, you can count on Dr. Crowley and his effective, friendly staff to provide you with the quality care you deserve. Call 352-237-8400 for an appointment or more information. That number again is 352-237-8400. Looking forward to service your vision needs. All right, 10 minutes before. 
before 10 o'clock time flies when you have a great guest. Lavira yes. Edick is our great guest right now. She's in North Dakota. She's an artist, a genealogical researcher, a 90-year-old great-great-grandmother, actually 89 and a half, yeah. uh, <laughs> an entrepreneur, the first lady of an insurance company. We didn't ask her that. And she's an author. Her book is called Four Score and More. You know, the, fa- the fact, uh, go- uh, welcome back, Vera, Lavira. The, the fact that you are... An artist and also a poet is not surprising to me. It, it seems like those two usually go hand in hand. Right. Uh, my, my grandmother was a poet, and I didn't realize it until after she passed away and found a book of her poetry. So I, I put a book together now and then with her poetry and mine. Oh, that's awesome. Are, are you going to publish it, or is it already published? It's, uh, I just published it for the family. That was before I started thinking about, you know, writing a book in earnest. And actually, I was in a bad near-fatal car accident when I was uh, uh, 75. And that's when I seriously started thinking. It seemed that there was a message kept coming to me that God left me here for a reason. And that's when I started thinking about writing this book and uh, maybe getting a message across to not only my family, but others who might read it. Were you um, a philosophical child? I would say I was, right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that's something that we've observed, is that when somebody is philosophical in older years, it probably means they were when they were younger, too. Uh, some, somebody who kind of just lives life haphazardly probably always did. <laughs> I don't know if that's true right. or not. Uh, you you said something. Uh, I did a lot of. Oh, go 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 ahead. I did a lot of. Uh, had time to sit on the steps of our farm home and watch the clouds roll by and dream that. And I always dreamed that someday I'd be an artist or a uh, write. You know. You said something very appreciative of the uh, younger generation when we were on break you really gave accolades to them and you said that they were very very smart and uh, very beneficial to to uh, uh, the world and that's really something when you consider the headlines of today always dwelling on the negative well i think we need help from our parents and our teachers and especially our mothers to uh, urge them to take a little bit of time for themselves and a little bit of time for god so why are you called the first lady of an insurance company? Because I was married to the president oh. of the company. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so t- tell me about um, your, your courtship with him. He was, uh, when did he pass? He passed away in uh, uh, 91. Okay. Oh, wow. So he's 91. Been, he's so I've been, you know, I've been a widow for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. So w- did you meet before World War II? No, no. Uh, it wasn't my first marriage. I uh, I moved to North Dakota in 1957 as a promotion for the, with the company I was with, and moved into the Provident Life Insurance mm-hmm. Building. And and our my marriage at that time had broken up, and uh, they gave me a parking lot right next to the vice president of the company. And six years later, I married him the president of the company at that time. <laughs> so we'll see God has and a at that time pardon I was just going to say God has a plan for you he had and I've always looked back that way that God seemed to have a plan for me when I married the first time I was 17 I married a man who was not able to support the family of two children that we had and so I became a female entrepreneur by uh buying a truck on the black market, building it up to a truck line of three, and uh, selling salt to the ranchers in the sand hills of Nebraska. Oh, wow. Wow. Salt from, is, that, is, salt from, is that profession from still around? No, no. It, uh, it lasted for 10 years, and uh, then both it and my, and my marriage failed. LaVera, Le- I'm guessing that we really can't get everything in, in the radio interview, but I, I was wondering uh, about the writing process of this book. When you sat down to write this book, did you, 
go back i mean did, did you be, you have to I'm, I'm guessing there's no way around it if you if you're going to put it in writing you must relive everything that you're that we read later on yes i did i mean it's all a true story i actually revisited the moments and the memories of growing up on a farm and of course my genealogical research helped me a great deal and over the years I had always had an inspiration to write, so I had kept journals and written short stories. Oh, that taking helped. Writing classes in college and, you know, that type of thing. Did, it, did anything, as you recalled your, your, your life, did anything strike you as funny and, and that, that we'll also relate to? Did oh, a lot of, as you read, as, if you read my book, there will be a lot of things that will double you over in laughter because there were some funny incidents you know as i was growing up like when i was a baby they tell about my sunday dinners were a great thing and mom had a cake in the bottom of the buffet and me and my cousin one climbed in the buffet and fed the other one the cake <laughs> <laughs> i love that but, you know, but uh, stories like this and then my mother uh was bohemian and uh, she always sort of resented it, and Dad would call her a bohunk. And she'd say, <laughs> oh, no. I'm, not, I'm not bohemian. I was born in America, and I'm an American. There you and go. And he'd come back, he'd come back, well, if uh, a cat has kittens in the oven, does that make them hot biscuits? Oh, oh wow. I love those things. <laughs> I love those things. So, you know, there are stories that have been passed down or that I remember that... Uh, mm-hmm are very amusing. By the way, I'm now working on my second book, which is uh, called Cattails, Kitty Capers, and More. Uh, okay, that, oh, sounds, nice. that, that sounds like a big difference from a memoir. Is it, is it a funny book? It's a book to let people know or try to inspire people to realize how important animals, pets, are in our lives. Oh, and yeah. how much they can... Uh, uh, make uh, our lives as we're seniors uh, more enjoyable. I have a constant companion, a little West Highland Terrier that I'd be lost without. And I, I think that uh, we don't realize just how important pets are. Do you live alone? Yes, I live alone. Do my still do my own housework. Oh wow! You are such a wonderful mentor, uh, not just to future generations, but to the uh, generations that are living more. I'll bet uh, uh, that that are uh, living now. I'll I'll bet you are a rocking great great grandma. I I bet the kids love seeing you. Oh well, I don't get to see that great great granddaughter very often, but due to internet, I get to see videos of her taking her first steps and oh. as she's growing up. <laughs> and what do they call you? Oh. What do the kids call you? Oh, they call me a number of different things. Uh, my dog's name is Towsy and one group of gan- grandkids because they always associated me being with Towsy. I'm Grandma Towsy. Ah. Oh. oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Gram B to some of them because my nickname is B. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, uh, I, I I answer to most anything. Well, you're a delight to speak to, Lavera. It, uh, it's uh, an honor to have you on the show. I'm looking forward to reading the book. Um, you have mastered so much of this. We speak to authors every single day, and you 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 pull it off like the best of them. the The book is called Four Score and More: My Memoir, History, and a Family Legacy. Lavera Edick wrote the book. And uh, how do we get the book? How do we buy it? It's available at Barnes & Noble, either online or in the store, and Trafford.com, uh, Trafford Publishing has it for sale, and also Amazon. And if you'd uh, like to get in touch with me, my email address is laveraedic 25 at gmail.com. Yeah, and Lavera spells her last name E-D-I-C-K, so laveraedic 25 at gmail. Right. You said. By the way, that the sound of that clock chiming in the background just took me to my mother's house. She had a clock just like that. 
Your clock I is wrong. My clock. Your clock is wrong. By the way, it's it's not it's not ten o'clock yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's only nine here. <laughs> uh, Lavira, you are welcome back anytime. I'm looking forward to speaking to you again. And um, and uh, if you're ever in Florida, we'd love to see you in the studio. Uh, that would be fun. I'm going to be in Florida, matter of fact. I'm going to uh, fly into Orlando and then go with my daughter to Miami for a book signing. My goodness. Oh, wonderful. Well, good. have fun and, and, and definitely come back and be with us. We uh, need to take a little break. LaVera Edick, thank you. We'll be right back. This is WOCA Ocala. 63 FM, The Source. News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. On day two of the Boston Marathon bombing trial, more graphic testimony expected. I've heard people share some incredibly personal stories of their experience, really the terror and the pain they felt when that first bomb exploded. Karen McWaters lost a leg below the knee. She went to the marathon with her friend Crystal Campbell, who was killed. McWaters remembered dragging herself to her dying friend's side and pressing their heads close together.